Okay, so let's get started. So this week we have a guest. And Aniko, if you want to introduce yourself a bit, you can do it now. Yes, uh, so I'm Aniko Kustor. I'm a PhD student at the Professor Tsuchiya's lab. And uh, I am working on um, depersonalization and derealization disorder and uh, mind wandering and consciousness research. So, uh, and I have only just started my PhD, so I am very much uh, just getting to know things and learning things. And thank you for the opportunity to join this conversation. Yeah, that's uh, fine. And is this the first time for you to be a like podcaster? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. And that's also like interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, by the way, uh, this week we read the paper Cortical and Subcortical Signatures of Conscious Object Recognition, uh, published in Nature Communication 2020 by Max Levinson et al. So, first, um, before uh, giving you a bit of the summary of this paper, uh, we want to check the author information. And um, do you no, do you guys know any of them? I mean, the authors? For me, I don't know. Ryuichi do not know. Yeah. And I do not know. So I I have heard about the senior author. Yeah. So she is actually working on uh, a pretty cool Thing. He, she is, uh, I think, leading this adversarial collaboration on, uh, uh, yeah, so to to test predictions of the of first order and higher order theories of consciousness, and oh, okay. uh, yeah, so I I have been very much looking forward to read her work because I am very interested in this adversarial collaboration approach to to solve consciousness and. Yeah, um, I have been very impressed by, by this paper, so I am very much yeah. looking forward to the outcome of that project as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next we can, yeah, do the summary of the paper. And like, do you want to like try or <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I mean, I think this, what this paper trying to do is to find or identify the areas mm -hmm. for conscious uh, recognition mm. um, like in like existing theories of consciousness such as um, IIT global New York state theory or uh, recurrent uh, processing theories they propose some like specific let's say the occipital parietal or sensory or frontal parietal or that kind of in a sense localized mm. networks in this paper um, the, the authors claims that much kind of large scale networks can be very important for conscious cognitions i think that's the like a big message from this paper um, do you want to add something on top of that? Yeah, and uh, also, so this uh, this paper's original is uh, they examined the subcortical area and uh, like the default mode network, and they they saw the relationship between the between them and the recognition or category categorization and the recognition. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, yes, so I think this is more important in this paper. Okay, Aniko, do you have something? Yeah, so I think it's, it's also important to mention that uh, they have used a uh, seven Tesla fMRI, uh, MRI scanner, which, is, which uh, enables much better resolution and uh, mm -hmm. then, then the traditional uh, three Tesla channels or three Tesla scanners. And uh, so that is also, I think, um, um, it adds to the quality and the, the kind of um, 
uh, impressiveness of this paper because clearly they have used a very good methodology and and a very good equipment to test the hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in terms of the methodology or the task itself, and they use that mask, so near threshold mask, so present a uh, image um, from four categories, I think, uh, animals, uh, house, face, mm. and object, then present it to subjects in FMR scanner, um, ask, uh, first ask subject to uh, categorize or identify or detect the category of the mm. image mm. out of the four options, and then ask subject whether they recognize it or not in two alternatives, uh, false choice thing. Yeah. So I think this is, you know, the just a um, standard masking ask. Yes, and in addition, I, in this study, they don't use the, you didn't use the masking, I think they use the, uh, they are vector and uh, scrambled image. So instead of using okay. the masking, because mas masking, masking is uh, def defends the after process of the information. So the, the authors use, use the scramble image, not uh, masking. Mm. Yeah. I think the word masking is not yeah, not appropriate, I think. So they just change or mod, uh, moderate the contrast mm. so that a subject cannot see it in a sense properly. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of operation they or the author took in this experiment, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So if I understand it correctly, they, they set up um, uh, this. Um, um, staircase uh, methodology or they used staircase methodology to establish uh, a specific contrast level mm -hmm. where the participant can see uh, or can identify the object 50 approximately 50 percent of the time yeah. Yeah. so i think yeah the task itself is not so complicated yeah I think what, or what I found interesting is that they asked um, yes or no question mm -hmm. for the uh, recognition instead of like a confidence mm. uh, ranging from let's say one from one to four. So yeah, that's, I, or is this a, like a common in like a psychophysics? this like yes no for this like uh, near threshold like images my i see the in this context and in perceptual consciousness study i think the many study use the PA, pas perceptual awareness scale and one to four mm. but but to but in this paper they use the yes no choice and it it in this study, yes is yes means that the uh, participant uh, strong participant recognize it mm. for what it did, eat. and and the other is no. So the covered this in this study, the definition yes or no is so more more strong stronger than the other studies. Right, yes, no, two choice. Mm. Okay, so in a sense, like when subject say yes, it like means that they vividly like uh, recognize yeah. the images. Okay, so Aniko, do you want to say uh, something or? Yeah, no, I think that's uh, that's a good uh, summary of the task. I think one one um, thing we should also mention that uh, uh, this way. Uh, by using a, uh, this yes or no uh, setup, they were able to to examine these false positive um, ah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Set, so false, false positive responses, um, which is I think a bit more easier to 
uh, categorized when you just have this yes or no question, where when you have the the um, the scale, I, I mean, you could also analyze that, but I guess in, in this case, it was a more straightforward approach. <laughs> I see. Um, okay, that's about the task. Mm -hmm. Then maybe we can next go to the findings from these uh, papers. And I think, or in a sense, I mentioned it in the summary, but they found kind of large scale networks. And um, as uh, Ryuichi mentions, and they, what they mean, or when they say a large scale networks, uh, they include uh, not only like cortical network, cortical, cortical network, but also subcortical and also uh, default uh, mode network. Mm -hmm. I think in consciousness study, the default uh, mode network uh, kind of is not uh, studied well. Yeah. Yeah. It, because like a sub you know, the subcortical area is um, often uh, mentioned or always mentioned in the level of consciousness. Yeah. So wake versus uh, like anesthesia or yeah. sleep and that kind of stuff. But in a sense, they're like a completely separated. Like if you talking about the level of consciousness with subcortical region, hmm. they just stick to it. But the, when you talking about the content of consciousness, these uh, subcortical regions, I think, will be less discussed. Mm -hmm. So that's a kind of interesting point yeah. in this paper. Um, regarding the default uh, mode network, do you want to say something or? I. Mm. So, to to be honest, I do not know a lot about this uh, default mode network. So before reading this paper, I just uh, we've checked the Wikipedia. Yeah. And then it says that the kind of networks uh, observed while um, awake, but not doing any tasks. Is that correct? So in a sense, when or does it mean that mm -hmm. when you are in like sleep yeah. stage, that kind of network will not be like observed or different mode network? Yeah. Uh, see. And I know that uh, the resting state is also measured. Measured. Resting state is also different mode network activated. Mm. And the imag imagination or something. Mm -hmm. uh, related to the self. So I think the default mode network is uh, related to self consciousness or something for self identify or I see. reflection of mm -hmm. self. Yeah, so I think as far as I know, um, the default mode network has been mostly discussed in relation to like you said, resting state, uh, fMRI recordings. Yeah. And uh, so it is, I think, mostly contrasted to task-related activity. Mm -hmm. So when you have to do, you have to complete a task, then uh, there are all these attention networks that are working to, to like for you to complete the task. But then when you are doing a resting state and you just instruct it to let your mind wander, Mm -hmm. Try to stay awake, focus on the fixation cross, then the default mode network um, gets activated. Yeah. And, and indeed, it is, it is um, described as uh, related to self, uh, mm -hmm. self relevant activity. Um, mm -hmm. and, but yeah, I was also actually surprised, and the paper was also mentioning that uh, the default mode network hasn't been really included in. Uh, in the theories of uh, or the, in the predictions of uh, different theories of consciousness and that seems also a bit of a um, mistake or, or um, a misstep because obviously this is such a such an important network mm. uh, so yeah I think it's a good it's a good start to actually include the, uh, the default mode network mm. Mm. 
Yeah, and also regarding that, I have like two questions or like comments. So the first comment is that um, the state uh, deactivated uh, deactivated states, or mm. well, they say that the deactivation is important as mm -hmm. well. That's a kind of interesting mm. point, I think, because if you're talking about or doing like neuroscience study, most people like talking about the state activation states mm. rather than deactivation. Mm. So I think that's very like interesting thing. And the second point is that again, the default mode networks. Um, I was wondering, or I understand this is kind of out of target of this paper, but like, I'm just wondering whether the network will be observed while in like sleep stage and also in dreams uh, stage, because if that's the kind of um, true or the default mode network should be observed in while you are perceiving something consciously, then if you are in sleep and having some dream, mm -hmm. that should be also like a, or I mean, the network should be like observed in that kind of stage, right? So um, that's a kind of, yeah. Um, Thing I want to like uh, ask you guys or the question I had while mm. reading this paper. Well, for me, as far as I know, the default mode network is related to the effect, executive function network or attention network or something, the external task related network. So it I I want to mean that if participant do the task, the effective, the executive function network is activated and the default mode network is disactivated. So in this study, I, the authors did not measure the, so something, something ex effect, executive function network or attention network, but in this study, they, are, they, they conducted the, uh, like the identified task or task relevant. So, the default mode network it is activated. Mm -hmm. It is con uh, congruent to the previous research, previous I I I, I sorry, previous knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and just to kind of address your question, Yota, I don't really know if uh, the default mode network is actually activated in or how how is it uh, its activity in sleep. Yeah. I think it's um, like I I would assume that in in deep sleep uh, in non REM sleep I, I don't think it's activated because you know or I would assume it it's definitely it, its activity is much more altered yeah. than to the wake state yeah and I think there's also an issue of how do you define uh, the if so yeah, if, if the activity in sleep can be compared to the activity in wakefulness in the default mode network, whether if some there is some fluctuating activity there, um, would would can can that be actually uh, considered default mode network activity in the traditional sense? Mm -hmm. um, I I am not sure about that, uh, but. Uh, yeah, um, that's definitely an interesting question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we talked a little bit about the default mode network and subcortical areas, but like, do you want to add something in terms of the summary or the findings of this paper? Like, uh -huh. Or did you find something especially like interesting? Interesting or do you have something or? So I, okay, so. The task task or object relevant or recognition, the recognition is related to the uh, cortical area, but the also the non irrelevant contents of contents is related to the subcortical area and DMS DMN is so important so interesting for me. It means that the recognition is related to the cortical area, but the, something the, oh no, sorry, categorization and recognition is related to the cortical area and 
But however, the recognition, only recognition is related to subcortical area. So sub, and therefore subcortical area is related to the level of consciousness, something arousal, and but also the something detection, past detection of the perceptual consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so in a sense, the activation in some cortical areas is kind of requires to like have a, some content, the conscious content. So that's that kind of the, yeah, relate, yeah, yeah, implication from the findings in this paper. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but uh, so my understanding is that the actual content mm. is not uh, or cannot be identified from only oh, yeah. sub subcortical activities. And and that kind of uh, points towards uh, the the importance of the uh, the cortical activity in relation to qualia. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that is very very interesting to just to be able to say that we have some results showing that uh, although consciousness itself or or conscious processing is related to the whole almost the whole brain, but the actual the content or in, in this case, qualia may be only related to the cortical areas. Mm -hmm. So I think this paper talking about only the state of activations, mm. but maybe it's very like interesting to see the like uh, interaction between these areas, I guess. Mm -hmm. Or do they like mention about the interaction among areas? Mm. Or I, yeah didn't see anything about the uh, like a uh, connectivity stuff in this paper yeah yeah um yeah this is kind of my naive uh comment but like when i saw the word a uh, default mode network mm. kind of like a I, I can't kind of imagine that like there is some kind of connectivity stuff but yeah i in this paper there were no like a connective functional connectivity huh. Uh, analysis so I was a bit like a su surprise or is it uh, like a pretty common in the like default mode network studies I don't know where so but normally default mode network study is measured by its networks so uh, you mean that so functional network is um, showed no um, often mm. Yes, I think I think I agree with you that this study is not uh, default the network. So it is so it is also for me um, why why or something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh it's definitely you are definitely correct in, in your intuition that in most cases um, the default mode network and you know all these different brain networks are are talked about in relation to functional connectivity and I think these regions have been identified by looking at functional connectivity but um, in the paper specifically they don't actually say the default mode network but they say the default mode network regions mm. uh, so I think they specifically just uh, look at those specific regions that are that has been identified with, in other studies um, as part of the default mode network. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Or at least, yeah, that was my understanding. Yeah, I think in, in this case, they have been mostly interested in, in region-specific activity patterns and not necessarily the, uh, the interaction between them. Yeah. Although they have been looking at these multivariate pattern analysis where you could uh, possibly say that if there are multiple regions are used, then, then there might be some relation mm -hmm. uh, between them. But yeah, I'm also not that familiar with this type of methodology. I see. Like, it's kind of, I'm <laughs> kind of stupid, but like, a, like, this paper, like the by the nature of this like research or the purpose of this, like but, like there are so many like regions related to consciousness. Um, 
it's very difficult to kind of relate one region to like a specific like a processing or something like mm. they mentioned like a like a visual area or ACC on like prefrontal or just a lot so it's yeah. very difficult to like yeah no like then like or well, their point is that, that everything the whole yeah. area is important but like it's or kind of is it like separation in a sense in like these areas or they are uniformly or contribute to the conscious con content or something so well yeah i just <laughs> yeah it's for me like very like a uh, difficult in a sense to understand like they said this region is important this is important blah blah yeah. blah, blah, blah blah but i was like oh okay there are so many regions yeah and, and that, that's it from like uh yeah yeah I but what, what what about you like did you find oh like this region is quite interesting because this is known to be like process this information or blah 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 or yeah like but i think that uh, they also want to use the global neural workspace theory and this theory shows the global ignition is most important uh, not not only the visual area but also the pareto and the frontal and the global ignition so uh, they also want to use the the full full brain's area mm. and they want to compare the global neural workspace theory means global ignition and uh, versus the iit or big um, processing is means the uh, postural area only post postural area is important mm. so so to make sure that the where which theory or which which area is important i think the uh, they uh default the um so many areas mm. so for me i it's not um sub, sorry I, it's not how to say sub, surprise or yeah. yeah so for me it was i i had the same impression like I think naively you would guess that you know your whole brain is pretty important mm -hmm. and you know if it's there of like i think it's it's likely that it contains information from the ongoing uh you know conscious experience and i think this was one of their main um kind of um result or or, or main point of discussion that actually most of the brain contains information related to the content of the conscious experience and even i think this is as you mentioned the deactivation of the uh, default mode network so i think that was also something interesting like activity pattern or activation mm. uh, i think it's more easy to understand how can it contain information mm -hmm. uh, about the stimuli but uh, at least for me it's, it's more intriguing how can the activation contain information from the same thing and but obviously like it, it is the same process but yeah it's, it's not something i would initially were thinking of so it was also quite surprising for me mm -hmm. In a sense, I think figure 4B, which shows the classification accuracy across different uh, regions. Mm. And the accuracy from visual area is, uh, it seems like, a, you know, the higher mm. compared to other regions. Mm. Um, but like, does it mean like the visual area is like uh, containing more information? than other areas or should we like interpret like they are all like uniformly contains or equally like contribute to like a content recognition or hmm. and like a, and kind of, yeah another question is that okay if they say that the whole brain regions are important for content specific uh cognition hmm. so like okay let's say if we like 
simulate the lesions in a sense to mm. a specific area mm. then does it mean like they or the patient subject cannot uh, mm. perceive anything mm. or what if that i think it's kind of mm, i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, so isn't that isn't that the the comparison here is between recognition and on the like on the cognized stimuli? So, uh, I mean, what I would assume that um, in case of unrecognized but visible or fairly visible object, you would have similar level of information on the visual cortex, but then maybe in higher areas, you would have this difference between okay i recognize this i don't recognize that but then on on the figure it actually shows that yeah even in the visual areas the the recognized uh, objects are are much more uh, easily um i know identifiable or categorizable yeah so that that kind of means or for me at least it it means that uh, even even on the, yeah, the, these early sensory areas are um, important in the recognition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think so. But this in this figure's visual area is how which data means visual one, we one or higher visual area. So I I forget it, forgot. Probably from one to four. From one to four. I'm not sure, uh, but somewhere they compare the classification between visual or RE sensory area and ventral temporal area or something. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the next figure. It's figure five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but by the way, like I like asked all question I have. So if you want to ask something or if you find something interesting, you can like start raising your like, what about uh, for, for me? Uh, just I think the in last last qu- you are last question that the uh, visual area. Mm-hmm. I think I'm I think the feedback is also included in it. Uh, mm-hmm. the data. So in this in this so uh sorry and uh, lame lame is sorry for uh recurrent uh, recurrent, recurrent recurrent processing it means. Uh, Feed forward and he feed the loop is important and the visual and the, uh, more activated. So visual this visual recognition and the relationship between the recognition and the pre- visual the, uh, data show includes the feedback loop. So so boy one is also activated. I see, but like I don't know about the temporal resolution of uh, uh, fMRI. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Mm-hmm. So you know whether the like feedback information are uh, reflected in these activation patterns or not. Uh, kind of yeah. questionable. I guess. Yeah, so I think they also mentioned this in the in the limitation sections that uh, indeed the fMRI. Like fMRI analysis cannot really show the the rapid interactions and and you know with uh, um, a time resolution that for example an EEG could could ensure uh, or or they suggest MEG. Um, so yeah, I think that's also uh, an important an important issue because you would assume that the the um, conscious experience is a bit faster than yeah. you know, a couple of, or like it, the, the changes in it, it's a bit faster than the um, time resolution mm-hmm. uh, with fMRI. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, no, I think it's a, it's a good point. It would be very interesting. And, and indeed, it, it, I don't think it would be able to capture the feedback. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's likely the, the visual areas known to get feedback from higher areas so uh, maybe this uh, level of of uh, predictive accuracy in the visual cortex is is because of the feedback from from higher areas and not from visual cortex activity itself mm-hmm. 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 
so for me at least for some uh, a question I wanted to ask you guys specifically uh, because you are more familiar or more um, yeah I, I guess more knowledgeable I, I, I consider you more knowledgeable in the uh, integrated information theory yeah. and um, so one of the one of the conclusions or one of the suggestions of the authors is that uh, uh, this study kind of goes against to um, the IIT because IIT supposedly emphasizes the the posterior uh, hot zone import the importance of the posterior hot zone and um, yeah and this study is actually uh, showing a more wide ranging network involvement but I I am kind of um, uh, on Uncon- or not convinced whether this is uh, if first if if IIT has really uh, specifically only uh, pointed out the the um, the activity in the um, parietal network and also like I think that's not not one of the m- most important uh, claims of IIT. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like. The hot, posterior hot zone is not the kind of the key of the IIT, mm. but just the prediction mm. from IIT. So even if we can't find like some important network in um, posterior area, that does not mean that the IIT is not true, mm. because the theory says that we need to identify something that maximizes uh, so-called the uh, big Y. So as long as the network suggested in this paper kind of have the highest big phi, then I think it does not like a contradict to IIT. That's kind of my understanding. Yeah. Yeah, that I think that people or some people suggest that posterior hot zone is important, mm-hmm. is based on some anatomical information. And it's not tested yet, of course. So we are not sure. So maybe the prediction might be just wrong, but it does not, again, it does not mean that the theory itself is wrong. That's kind mm-hmm. of, yeah, that's my, yeah, understanding and to reply to your questions. Um, what, do, do you like satisfied with my answers or? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think in in, in this, uh, line of discussion, I think it it's also makes sense for me that, uh, you know, a widely distributed network activity may be more related to, to a higher phi in the brain mm-hmm. uh, as opposed to a specific act, like activity in yeah, this posterior heart zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that that is in line with the ideas of, of IIT. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, this is kind of, I don't know, it's a kind of not good attitude because like, you know, obviously it's not easy to like test IIT yeah. on empirical data, mm-hmm. but like this is kind of the theoretical like uh, implication from the theory. And also like, I wonder whether how like people supporting, let's say higher order theories or global neuroaspect theory, uh, how do they like see or interpret these results? They might just say that see this like prefrontal and occipital area is also like activated. So our like kind of theory is not like, mm-hmm. yeah, falsified or <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That was my my uh, other question as well. Is like this paper seems to kind of uh, bring evidence against all of the three theories that it it mentions. So so in that way, I think it's it's quite nice because um, like yeah, the evidence supports some aspects of each theories, I guess, but then also contradicts some. So I think it really shows that. Uh, we are just in the very beginning of consciousness research, mm. which is good for us because we might have a career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let's, let's hope so. Mm-hmm. So maybe the next step 
from this uh, finding is to like have or to measure neural activity mm. at uh, higher temporal resolutions, like yeah. EEZ or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe we can use like source localization or mm. something and then see whether the yeah findings are kind of uh, consistent with uh, like physiological and psychophysics uh, findings and things like that, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, so I think an, uh, another question in, in this case is whether uh, the, like how much, so they mentioned that these activity patterns contain information about the categories. Yeah. Um, and I wonder actually how much of the, of that information is relevant to the, to the conscious experience or qualia, because when I, when I've, remember or when i when i try to imagine doing this task mm. um i don't know I, I i just very naively i i wouldn't have the uh you know my full attention or or like so much of my uh conscious experience mm. informed by the the category of the the object i i see like that's that's even if that's the task i wouldn't say subjectively that that is most of my consciousness or most of my conscious experience mm -hmm. um yeah what do you think about this or do you understand what i mean yeah 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 yeah. i think it's or i just feel like it's very difficult to infer the information contained in this um or these regions because what they did is just the classification accuracy mm. so for example, we can say that some region contains some specific informations and others contains others. And then we can kind of collect all these information to have one full conscious experience information, something like that. But I think they did not mention anything like that. So what may probably what we can do is that use these whole uh, activation from all these you know, regions and then do some prediction and if it's reach let's say 100% accuracy or something mm. then maybe we can say is that like each region have some specific information and then mm. by combining integrating these information we can have like the full conscious information that's kind of my yeah understanding and it's you know very difficult to like decode the information contained in each um, processing mm. i mean at the different areas so that's an, another like question we should uh, uh, address in the future as in like a young consciousness researcher maybe mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what about you like what, what do you think about the any goods Question. Uh, information. I think that uh, this information is means uh, like the IIT or intrinsic information, right? Uh, so or uh, of or the image or information of images, right? I, or something. Okay. So, do you want to say something, Anik? Yeah, no, I'm. I'm just wondering if it if it does like that's yeah indeed this is the question. What is the information, and what is the the information that is used in here? Uh, what's how is it relating to to conscious experience? Mm. <laughs> actually, or, or or whether if it's indicative, of it. yeah. Yeah, actually, before starting or uh, today, uh, while we have a lunch, we had a lunch. We talking about the information and the relation um, between information and consciousness. So if you do some psychophysics, you might find some information in the, in the literatures and also from like a information theoretic, like IIT kind of analysis, we will also use information, the word information, mm. but the meanings of information are completely different. Mm. So it's very like a, you know, dangerous to like uh, use the word information. It's kind of, I, I would say, similar to the word consciousness, because it contains many like uh, meanings. So, yeah. So 
uh, sorry, uh, next week I have a one week off. So I'm going to check the literature. Mm. So try to find the like word information in different fields and then see the difference among them and how we can connect these like information across different areas. So that's kind of my homework next week. <laughs> Oh, so cool. <laughs> yeah, I would be very interested to hear that. Definitely, definitely share, share the outcome of that. Yeah, definitely. The investigation. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's, it's something that actually has been pointed out in, in the IIT literature that, uh, that the information in, 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 in consciousness or like in, in the terms of IIT, it's not the type of information like the Shannon Mm. uh type of information so yeah it's it's definitely difficult to to um kind of disentangle these two these two phases mm. Mm -hmm. that's it i don't know yeah it's, i don't know yeah i mean like it's i feel well yeah maybe that can be i don't know my like phd project maybe I don't know. well you know if you can do that that would be very impressive. <laughs> that's not <laughs> work. Yeah, like I think that's that's a good that's a good direction. Yeah, mm -hmm. go for it. Yeah. Okay. So, like, I think we have already like discussed the paper for about like mm -hmm. forty-five or fifty minutes, I guess. And do you wanna like say something or? Do you think we're good to finish now? Yeah, I think just uh, as a, you know, closing remarks, I, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, I would just like to acknowledge how cool this paper was. You know, it was very good to read. It's a, it's a very nice uh, combination of a relatively simple study, like, you know, just on the task, like you said, it's, it's fairly simple, but then it has been used in a, in a very ingenious way. So... Yeah, and the the analysis have been so extensive, and yeah, I think this is this is the type of study I uh, I really like because it, you understand it, but then it's also really adds to the literature and adds to your understanding of uh, these processes. So yeah, it, it's good good choice, nice very nice study. Oh, I mean, like I feel like you are like a good podcaster in a sense because <laughs> we have already like did this podcast yeah like three or four times um but we did not say the acknowledgement to the authors yeah so we didn't yeah. say anything like thank you or to the authors <laughs> i mean i don't know if it's it's you know i i i it didn't mean to say it's like a like a you know unnecessary or like an obligation but it's uh yeah you know i think yeah, for me at least, there are some papers, especially as a you know PhD student. You, you sometimes you just read a paper and it's like, I I don't even know what what I forget what he, we have been talking about in the sentence before. So I really appreciate when I actually, uh, yeah, when I read the paper that I can follow and understand, <laughs> but it's still you know discussing um, uh, very cool results and and interesting implications. So, yeah. I think it's yeah nice paper i was very happy to read this quickly and uh, discuss it right away yeah i think that's good and mm. how about you Richie, yeah. do you have anything nothing nice nothing? nice discussion <laughs> okay yeah. <laughs> yeah okay that's right okay so that's all for today i think so thank you